76 days. That was the number we were given. A countdown to a flyby, a brief encounter with Jupiter, and then, like Oumuamua and Borisov before it, a long silent exit into the interstellar dark. We were told Three Eye Atlas was a visitor, a traveler passing through our backyard on its way to somewhere else. But the math just broke. As of this week, the orbital models maintained by the Minor Planet Center and JPL's Horizon System have hit a catastrophic divergence. Atlas isn't accelerating out of the solar system anymore. It's slowing down. But it isn't the breaking of a dead rock hitting a gravitational wall. It is the calculated deceleration of a craft entering a capture maneuver. March 16th, 2026 is no longer the date Atlas leaves us. It is the date Atlas arrives. It's the day the solar system stops being a transit zone and becomes a parking lot. The Vanishing Hyperbola to understand how profound this shift is, we have to look at the geometry of deep space. When an object enters our system from interstellar space, it arrives with excess velocity. It is moving too fast for our sun's gravity to hold on to. In physics, we call this a hyperbolic trajectory. It's a one-way ticket. You come in from the void, you swing around a mass, and the slingshot effect flings you back out into the void at even higher speeds. Nature doesn't just change a hyperbola into an ellipse. To do that, you have to shed an immense amount of kinetic energy. You have to bleed speed. Three weeks ago, Atlas was clocked at 40 kilometers per second. Predictable, steady. Then, the blue luminescence we discussed previously, that eerie, cold light, didn't just intensify, it pulsed. Immediately following that pulse, the velocity vectors shifted. Atlas didn't just drift off course. It executed a retroburn that defies every model of natural outgassing. If this were a comet, we would see a massive plume of volatiles, a tail stretching millions of miles as gas pushed the rock. But there is no tail, there is only the blue glow and the cold, hard reality of the numbers. Atlas is no longer on an escape trajectory. It has targeted a Hohmann transfer to Jupiter's orbital plane. It is aiming for insertion. The refined nickel signature reanalyzed. We previously looked at the 10 micron nickel particles falling through our atmosphere. We called them sensors, we called them breadcrumbs. But with the new trajectory data, we have to reevaluate their purpose. If Atlas is staying, those particles aren't just reporting, they are a synchronization mesh. Spectroscopic analysis from the Mauna Kea observatories has detected a secondary signature within the nickel dust. It's not just pure metal anymore. We are seeing traces of ytterbium, an element used in high-precision atomic clocks and fiber optic amplifiers. Nature doesn't refine ytterbium in the tail of a comet. We use it for quantum memory and long-distance signal stability. Why would a visitor seed our atmosphere with quantum-stable metallic dust if it were leaving? It wouldn't. You seed an environment when you intend to stay and monitor the feedback. You build a network when you are setting up a permanent base of operations. The blue shift and the thermal paradox. Let's look closer at the blue glow. In my previous analysis, we hypothesized it was waste heat from a reactor. But as Atlas slows down, the blue light should logically dim if it were simple propulsion. Instead, it is shifting into the ultraviolet. In thermodynamics, when an object slows down without friction, that energy has to go somewhere. Atlas isn't just breaking, it is absorbing. It appears to be tuning itself to the Jovian magnetosphere from millions of miles away. Astronomers at the European Southern Observatory have noted that the radio noise coming from Jupiter, usually a chaotic roar of decometric radiation, is starting to show quiet zones. It's as if something is drawing power from the planet's magnetic field lines before it even gets there. We used to think Jupiter was a destination for Atlas to broadcast from. Now the data suggests Jupiter is the battery Atlas intends to plug into. Net to the silence of the agencies. This brings us to the most chilling part of the new data, the silence. The James Webb Space Telescope's maintenance schedule for early 2026 wasn't just a checkup. We've now confirmed via leaked launch manifests that the unspecified payloads heading to the L2 Lagrange point are high-gain interferometers. These aren't designed to look at distant galaxies. They are designed to map local low-energy transmissions. The world's space agencies are no longer tracking a near-miss. They are tracking a rendezvous, the 7.74 hour rotation, that stabilized gyroscopic spin, has remained perfect to the millisecond. No wobble, no decay. If it were a rock, 
the deceleration maneuver would have introduced precession, a slight tilt or shake, but Atlas remained perfectly still. It moved like a submarine through water, not a stone through a vacuum. If Atlas is not leaving, then the 76 days isn't the end of the story. It's the end of our isolation. We are about to have a neighbor, and this neighbor didn't knock. It just started moving its furniture into the biggest room in the house. Jupiter, the first cliffhanger, the signal seed. But here's the detail that should keep you up tonight. As Atlas decelerates, the 10 micron particles in our atmosphere have begun to vibrate. Not physically, magnetically. Ground-based magnetometers in high latitude regions are picking up a rhythmic, thrum at exactly 12.5 hertz. This is the frequency of the Earth's ionospheric cavity, the Schumann resonance. Atlas isn't just watching us, it is connected to the very heartbeat of our planet's atmosphere. Why would a machine heading for Jupiter need to synchronize with Earth's ionosphere, unless the broadcast isn't going out to the stars? Maybe the broadcast is coming here. Whatever happens on March 16th, Atlas isn't going back into the dark. It has found a home. And we are just now realizing that the year of the comet was actually the year of the arrival. But what is it waiting for? The answer lies in the specific parking spot Atlas has chosen within the Jovian system. It isn't aiming for the moons. It's aiming for the L4 Trojan point, a gravitational dead zone where an object can sit hidden and stable for millions of years. The trajectory shift confirmed one thing. 3i Atlas is not a passerby. It is a settler. But its chosen parking spot is what has sent shockwaves through the orbital mechanics community. Atlas isn't entering a standard orbit around Jupiter. It is targeting the L4 Lagrange point. In any two-body system, there are islands of gravitational stability. The L4 point sits 60 degrees ahead of Jupiter in its orbit around the Sun. It is a cosmic gravitational trap, a place where the pull of the Sun and the pull of Jupiter cancel each other out, allowing an object to stay perfectly stationary relative to the planet without consuming a single drop of fuel. By choosing L4, Atlas is doing something tactical. It is positioning itself in the high ground of the solar system. From L4, you have a permanent, unobstructed view of every inner planet, Mars, Earth, Venus, and Mercury, while remaining tucked away behind a shield of thousands of Trojan asteroids. It is the ultimate surveillance post. It's not just a parking spot, it's a fortified observatory. As Atlas approaches this stabilization zone, a strange pattern of maintenance issues has begun to plague our own eyes in the dark. The Juno spacecraft, which has been orbiting Jupiter since 2016, recently suffered a non-recoverable memory upset in its stellar reference unit. NASA officially cited high radiation interference from the Jovian belts. But the timing is too perfect. The upset occurred exactly when Atlas's blue glow shifted into the ultraviolet spectrum. It wasn't a radiation hit, it was a signal override. Simultaneously, the Lucy mission, currently on its way to study those very same Trojan asteroids, logged a telemetry glitch, its high-gain antenna momentarily lost lock with Earth, not because of a mechanical failure, but because it appeared to target a phantom source in the empty space where Atlas is projected to arrive. It's as if Atlas is claiming the Jovian system. It is systematically blinding or distracting our local assets as it moves into position. We aren't just losing data, we are being pushed out of the room. Back in Earth, the 12.5 Hz thrum in our ionosphere, the synchronization with the Schumann resonance we noted earlier, has evolved. It is no longer a static pulse. It has become modulated. Data analysts specializing in non-terrestrial signal processing have noticed that the 12.5 Hz frequency is carrying piggybacked data packets. The structure of these packets isn't binary. It's topological. It's more like a map than a code. When researchers at the SETI Institute ran these modulations through a spatial renderer, they didn't get a message. They got a mesh network schematic. The 10 micron nickel particles aren't just sensors, they are repeaters. Every grain of dust falling through our clouds is a tiny node in a global antenna. Atlas is using the Earth's own atmosphere as a giant spherical receiver. It has turned our planet into a biological and chemical sensor for itself doesn't need to send a probe down to the surface to know what we're doing. It has turned the air we breathe into a surveillance device. As Atlas bleeds off its interstellar velocity, its physical profile is changing. Radar imaging from the Goldstone Deep Space Communications Complex shows that the rock-like exterior, what we thought was an irregular asteroid surface, is sloughing off. It was a shroud. Beneath the layer of interstellar ice and dust lies a perfectly smooth ovoid structure. It is roughly 400 meters long, 
with a surface reflectivity that approaches 99%. It doesn't reflect light like metal, it reflects it like a mirror finish ceramic. This explains the blue glow. It wasn't just heat, it was the refraction of high energy plasma held against a perfectly smooth hull by a magnetic bottle. Atlas is shedding its camouflage. It no longer needs to look like a comet because it knows we've already seen it. The scientific noir of the past few months, the mystery of the natural object, is dead. We are looking at a machine, but the most disturbing piece of evidence isn't in space, it's on the ground. A group of independent hobbyists tracking ghost satellites, decommissioned or classified hardware in Earth's orbit, have noticed a change in the behavior of the X-37B, the military's robotic space plane. In its latest secret mission, the X-37B has shifted its orbit to match the density of the 10 micron dust clouds. It isn't just watching the dust, it's harvesting it. And here is the twist. A leaked internal memo from a major defense contractor suggests that when they analyzed the captured particles, they didn't find refined nickel. They found biological scaffolding. The particles aren't just machines, they are a hybrid, synthetic biology designed to interface with metallic structures, and they are currently settling into our soil, our water, and our lungs. If Atlas isn't leaving in 2026, and if it's seeding Earth with biosynthetic sensors, the question isn't what will it do at Jupiter, the question is what is it doing to us? It is March 16th, 2026. The 76 days have expired. As 3, I Atlas threads the needle through Jupiter's magnetosphere, the scientific noir of the last few months reaches its boiling point. The ovoid craft is no longer decelerating, it is coupling. At a distance of 600,000 kilometers from the Jovian cloud tops, the blue-white plasma shroud surrounding Atlas has expanded, forming a visible bridge of light between the craft and the planet's north pole. This is the Perihovi activation. Atlas is not just using Jupiter as a battery, it is using the planet as a resonance chamber. The intense radio emissions of the Jovian dynamo are being modulated by the craft's internal reactor, turning the largest planet in our system into a subspace lighthouse. But the beam isn't pointed at the stars, it is pointed inward, directly at the inner solar system, directly at us. Remember the 12.5 Hz thrum in Earth's ionosphere? the packets of topological data, at the moment of the Jupiter coupling that frequency didn't just get louder, it locked. Across the globe, every node of the 10 micron nickel mesh, the dust we've been breathing for months, responded. In a phenomenon being called the shimmer, the silver noctilucent clouds over Europe and Asia began to glow with a soft bioluminescent pulse. The biological scaffolding discovered within that dust has finally revealed its purpose. It wasn't designed to kill us, it was designed to network us. Satellite telemetry from the James Webb Space Telescope, now fully operational with its unspecified upgrades, confirmed the unthinkable. The dust particles aren't just transmitting data to Atlas, they are receiving instructions. They are beginning to organize at the molecular level within Earth's biosphere. We are seeing the first signs of a planetary scale firmware update. As the world watches the spectacle at Jupiter, the Trojan anchor has finally dropped. Atlas has reached the L4 Lagrange point and stopped. But it isn't alone. As the craft's high power transmission washed over the thousands of Trojan asteroids at L4, the radar signatures of those rocks began to change. One by one, objects we have catalogued for decades as inert space debris began to exhibit the same 99% reflectivity as Atlas. The Trojans weren't just asteroids, they were a sleeper fleet. For millions of years, they have waited in the gravitational dead zone of our system, hidden under layers of dust and ice. They were waiting for a reporter to arrive with the activation key. Atlas was that key. The 76-day countdown wasn't for the arrival of a visitor, it was for the awakening of a resident. We spent years debating if Oumuamua was a scout or if Borisov was a probe. We comforted ourselves with the idea that we were the observed, that some distant intelligence was merely taking notes on our progress. We were wrong. You don't build a sleeper fleet and a global sensor mesh just to take notes. The new Genesis theory, now circulating in the highest levels of the surviving scientific community, suggests a much older story. It suggests that the solar system was terraformed and seeded billions of years ago, not just with life, but with the infrastructure for its eventually management. We aren't the explorers, we aren't even the observed, we are the crop. As of 1433 UTC today, the transmission from Jupiter has ceased.
Atlas is now dark, a silent mirror hanging at L4, surrounded by its awakened fleet. The 10 micron dust in our atmosphere has stopped vibrating. It has settled. It is now part of the soil, part of the water, and part of our DNA. The interference with our satellites has vanished, replaced by a perfect, eerie clarity. Our technology is running faster and more efficiently than ever before, but we no longer fully control the operating system it's running on. The year 2026 didn't change the world because a comet passed by. It changed because the world's owners finally finished the installation. The question is no longer when will they arrive or what do they want. The final terrifying question is, now that we are online, what is our first command? 76 days ago, we thought we were watching the end of a mystery. We were actually witnessing the end of our history. The real story begins tomorrow, and if you're still breathing the air, you're already part of it.